How's it going y'all? This is Ryan De La Garza and we are doing another Desmos build along. And in this one, we're going to look at how do I give feedback to students in my note component using information from the computation layer. So it used to be you had to kind of create, uh, use the content sync and build all of it in the CL, but now we can build in the note and just pull what we want. So we're going to look at that for an example like this using the math input. So Jay has five apples. John comes over, eats two of Jay's apples. How many apples are left? Well, normally it would submit there's three left, but how do we get it to do this? Checking, boom, feedback right there. So that's what we're gonna dive into in this build along. So let's jump right in. Um, first of all, I'm gonna come into my feed or my computation layer and I wanna define my feedback. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna say, all right, this is the feedback that I wanna to give to students. So I'm gonna say feedback equals. Now I have to come out and I have to name my input first. So I'm gonna name it input one. If you haven't done that, we gotta make sure we name that input so we can reference it when we come back in. So if we go feedback here, um, let's see, we wanna say when, my input one is submitted. So I want to start by saying I only want to display this when it's submitted. And input one numeric value equals three because that's my answer. I want to say awesome. And then let's give it the little celebration emoji right here. Right? So this is telling us when that input one is submitted and its value is three, this is the text that we're gonna provide. Now, I wanna say when input one is submitted, um, I'm gonna say, mm, let's check that again, dot, 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 and then we're going to give the thinking emoji right here. And then let's finish it up, wrap up our conditional and say, otherwise I'm gonna be blank. Now, I wanna dive into this uh, a little closer for a second. Okay, so what we have here, we're saying when my input one is submitted and its numeric value is three, I get the awesome. But notice on my second line, I just had to say when input one is submitted, let's check again. I didn't need to put that it's not equal to three. So the computation layer is gonna read things from top to bottom and it's looking for true statements. So first it says input one submitted, that's true. Numeric value is three. If that's not true, it's automatically going to move to the next line of code. So the next line says, is it submitted? Yes, it's submitted. It's automatically going to display that. So we put our true statement and our like where we want to end in the, the ultimate piece at the very top. And that way, everything else, we can put less and less code in so that it's just checking from that point on. And then otherwise, it lets it stays blank. So let's check out what this looks like in uh, in action. So we go to preview. If I put um, two, oh, nothing's happening because I haven't called it up yet. Oops, tried to jump the gun. Here's where we wanted to actually talk about, and this is what the whole build along was about. I wanna come down to this button in the bottom right corner, and this is insert a value from the computation layer. So when I click this, it's gonna automatically, it recognizes, hey, you have a variable called feedback in there. Is that what you want me to pull up? Yes, it is. So I'm gonna click feedback, and now it's gonna pull that variable from the computation layer and drop it in my note. Now let's check it out. So if I come up here and say two, hmm, let's check that again. But if I, my correct answer of three, click it, awesome, right? So if you're building along, make sure we've gotten to this point so far. Uh, you can go back, check it out. Uh, if you need to look at the sample code, you can go uh, on the screen that I have and check it out, make sure everything's working. But let's go to that extra piece. Remember in that third one, we had that nice um, little checking feature, right? Just a little cute thing. And this is actually, I got this from Kurt Salisbury uh, online. He had this in one of his activities. And I thought this is such a cool little nice way to really kind of polish up activities and make it look nice. So let's check on what we have to do to make that work. It's a few little changes. So if we're here, let's go back in here and I'm gonna change this input submitted and instead I'm gonna use the time since submit uh, function. So this is counting it as a timer. So all of our buttons in Desmos activate timers as soon as they're pressed. So if you just have a regular action button, it starts at zero and starts counting up. So what we're gonna do here is say when the time is greater than three. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. 
I'm going to put my time since submit, and I'm going to say when it's greater than three. Um, parentheses, if you leave them or you don't leave them, doesn't matter. That parentheses, you could set the length of the timer to be certain things. So I could say I want it to be four. In this case, we're not going to worry about it. So now if I look at this, what happens when I when I check, check it here? Let's see. If I do two, um, it's going to wait and then it displays. So what it's doing is it's waiting until that timer gets to three before it displays. So what we want to do is we want to fill that space. So let's keep going down. Remember our code reads from top to bottom. So we're going to put in another win input one dot time since submit. But this time let's do greater than two. I'm going to put my checking. And this is remember I want the what I want at the end to be at the top, and then I'm going to work backwards from there. Right? What I want at the end is this correct or incorrect text. That's why it's at the top. And then let's go down. So I'm going to add two more rows here. And I'm going to do this easy. I'm just going to control C, control V, control V. Paste that in there. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is when it's greater than one and when it's greater than zero. And I'm going to remove some of these periods as well. Right? And this spacing bothers me. So I'm going to line them all up because I like it all to be neat. Okay. So now let's talk about what this is doing. Okay. So what we have here in the first line, right, this is my correct. If the time since submit is greater than three, so if my timer is greater than three and the numeric value on my input is equal to three, then I'm going to get that awesome text. If it's the time is greater than three and it's not, then I get that let's check again. Because remember, it's going what's true. So it's going this one. All right, first line, not true. Second line, if it's greater than three, that's true. Then this is the text I'm going to display. If we keep going back, right, so if we're, we're running, let's say the timer's at one, right? It's counted zero, one. It's going to read these top three lines is not true. Say my timer is greater than one, so I display the checking with two periods. As soon as I press the button at zero, it's going there. So you're kind of thinking in reverse order here, but that's how it's working. So it's going to display when it's zero, I get one period. As soon as it crosses one, this statement becomes true. True, I get two periods. As soon as it crosses two, that becomes true. So I get three periods. And that's how we're building this cool little check feature. So let's go test it out and see how it works. So I go preview. Uh, if I put two, checking, 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 boom, let's try again. But if I come in and I fix it to three, checking, 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 correct. And that's how we can make that work. So cool little feature. Again, big shout out to Kurt Salisbury for having that in one of his uh, elementary activities. Thought it was super cool. Uh, and so I've started putting it into mine um, just because it's a fun way to, to kind of check and looks real polished. So uh, try that out in the build along on our first screen. I'm going to have the screen, the simple version here on screen two that we did originally. So if you want to come back and look and see that code, simple uh, screen three is going to have the full version with the checking dots going on. So you'll have both examples that you can look back on screen one as you build along. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments or reach out on Twitter um, at DLG Ed Tech. And thank you for watching and happy Desmosing.